So how to be a successful engineer, uh, specifically a successful network engineer. And really this kind of applies to all new sort of like IT engineers, not just exclusive to network engineers, but um, I mean, it's, it's all inclusive. But it, that, with that being said, guys, how to be successful as a network engineer. Um, I've been a network engineer for about two and a half years now, and I've learned a ton, an absolute ton of information, guys. And I just want to let you guys know everything I've learned, everything that's helped me, and we'll get straight into it. So the first thing that you have to do is document, document, document. And I cannot emphasize this anymore. Documentation is, if not the lifeline, the bloodline of an engineer, um, especially the network engineer, because a lot of the stuff we do, sometimes are, you're learning brand new stuff, some stuff that you might not use for a whole year that you may need, need to use again may come back to you and then you have to remember that. So, um, or if, 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 if anything happens, if there's an outage, you can see how that outage occurred. You could prevent that from happening again. Everything about network engineer is about being as efficient as possible and having documentation completely helps you with that. Because if you think about it, um, you, you have an issue, you solve the problem. Why try to, why try to, you know, try to figure out how that problem was, was, uh, solved again, when there's already like a, you know, a documentation that you had maybe six months ago that you can just go back to and just reread and say, okay, cool. This is how, this is what the problem was. Cause keeping that, keep in mind guys, you might, you might remember the issue or, or the problem that you solved maybe, you know, two weeks ago, but if it happened six months ago, guys, it's out of your brain. Trust me. And it's happened to me. Like I've had issues where I, I, I faintly remember, like, Hey, I remember that I've, I've had this exact problem. But I'm like, where did I, where, how did I solve this? Like, what, what, how did I go about solving this? And then I have to go through that whole entire process that I did six months prior of learning that all over again. But then again, I, after that, I wrote down the documentation for, it. I wrote down the steps, I wrote down what it was. And you save it like in sort of like a OneNote file or anywhere that you can just like go back to and always review. And also with documentation, it's always best if you guys can to share documentation with your other uh, employees, because obviously you may run to a problem, they may have not. Or they may have run into a problem that you have it and they can just share you, you know, their notes and, and explain to you like, this is what happened. This is what, you know, how to go about it. And that's about it. Because with documentation, guys, it, it, saw, it saves time. It saves the headache. It really just makes you a better engineer because you can always go back to that almost like a, a book of just information that you have that you can always go back to and just go back and check and see what you did and, and how you can go about doing things. So documentation is key. Keep documenting, even if it's so minute, so tiny, so little, so like, like why, why, like if you're asking yourself, you should, why should you document it? That's when you know you should be documenting. It's, it's the little things that matter as well. Obviously the big things you'll remember, but the little things are, are the things that, um, that kind of bite and, you know, take time. And like I said, it's all an efficiency game. If you can handle documentation and it's kind of annoying to do in the beginning, but, um, it saves you time in the end. So you might, you may think it's like, it's taking too much time, but in reality, it's going to actually save you way more time than, than you think. So documentation, number one key. Um, that, that's why I put it as the first one is documentation. Now, step number two, or not really step, but like the next key to, to be a successful engineer is to ask questions. Ask as many questions as you possibly can. If you guys are a new engineer, you're just starting your job, you, or you, you know, you've, you've been working for a couple of months, don't be shy to ask questions. Ask, questions are, are, are not bad. Um, if anything, they, they, they help you, they help the person that, that you're asking the question for, cause they're also, it gives them an ability to teach you the, the answer to it and train you. And they can also learn and benefit from it. But if you don't know something, you try to figure it out on your own, that itself, just like documentation takes a lot of time, right? Obviously, obviously in the beginning before you don't be the person who constantly asks questions, nonstop, 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 without even like trying, obviously try to try to figure out the solution to it or try to troubleshoot it or, or like, you know, try to do it at first. If you know you're stumped, you can't figure it out, then you go and ask questions. Don't be the person who tries to lone wolf it. Essentially, that's what I mean. So don't be the person who's just like, I'm gonna figure it out on my own. I know the people have figured it out before, but I'm gonna try to figure this out like on my own. I'm not gonna ask any questions because at the end of the day, it's gonna waste time. It's gonna give you more headaches, and it's just you know like why like like don't be don't be too egotistical about yourself. You know, there's no dumb questions. I'm always the person who's always and I always try to be willing to answer anyone's questions and I'm the, the same person that I try to reciprocate that as well and ask questions as well so you know you always have to do it both ways because obviously if if you know it, when you're new it questions are, are your lifeline and it helps a lot so uh, with that being said guys questions and documentation those those are huge absolutely huge uh, number three 
is this is going to hurt. It's called making mistakes. Okay. And this is almost unavoidable. And I, when I say making mistakes, I don't mean intentionally make mistakes. Okay. Obviously, you know, try your hardest. Don't make any mistakes. Don't make any outages, of course. But when you do make mistakes, it is an absolute critical learning lesson right there. Any, any outage you make, any mistake you make, for whatever reason, take that time as a learning lesson. Absolute learning lesson. Because think about it. Um, mistakes are unavoidable. We're all human. You know, we're not superhumans who can just do whatever they want and not make any mistakes. Um, mistakes are, are, are part of the game, right? Um, it just happens, you know. But the main thing is, what do you go about doing it? So, so you make the mistake. You know, how do you go about learning from it, right? So, you, you know, you look at what you did. What was the reasoning behind it? How can we, you know, prevent this from happening again? That's the main thing. And then, and then looking back at it, see like, what did you do? And you know, what was the reasoning behind that? What led up to it? And then from there, you can make a decision on how to prevent it from happening again. And once that's situated, guys, um, it's, it's fun because obviously everyone has their own outages. Everyone has like their own little story. Uh, a little bit about my first outage. I had an outage where if you guys don't know, um, with slash um, uh, IPv6 addresses, there's a uh, there's 128 um, um, subnet subnet addresses, right? And usually, you know, with point to point is about 127. I messed up and it had a slash one two, so slash 12. And if you guys don't know, the difference between a slash 12 address and a slash 127 address is incredible. Um, it, it changes the host from like basically two hosts to over I don't know like over millions of hosts, like a crazy amount of hosts. And obviously, if there's duplicate IP addresses, that causes problems within the network, if you guys don't know that. And obviously, that was my outage. But then I learned from that. I see what caused the outage. What? How did I, you know, how? what happened? And how, how could I prevent this from happening? And it was an absolute learning lesson. Everyone makes mistakes. And it's always a fun story to have. So, guys, don't worry about it. It's not that big of a deal. And, yeah. Um, let's see what we got here. I don't want to forget anything else. Yes, another, another one is mentor. Have mentors, right? Or... Let's say you work within a decent sized company with multiple network engineers. There's going to be senior engineers within your team, right? And treat those senior engineers with the utmost respect, first of all. And what you want to do is, if possible, if like if they have time, ask for them to mentor you or even best try to shadow what they do on a day-to-day -day basis. Obviously, don't try to bug them too much. Obviously, they might be busy doing things, but um, take notes about what they do. See what they do on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, because obviously when you're new, um, you know, you're very confused. You're very like everything's up over your head. Um, but ha having that senior that you can kind of mentor and kind of like mimic in a way, because obviously if they're a senior, they've been in the game, they've seen it all, they've done it all. They know, they, they pretty much know the network in and out. You just picking the brain helps tremendously, absolutely tremendously. You just even sitting down with a senior engineer and just like, just taking note about what they do on a day-to-day -day basis absolutely just helps. Um, so if you ever find the time, you know, you know, if you have time out the day, just, Hey, Hey, can I just mentor you? Shadow, you see what you do on a day-to-day -day basis? I'm really curious. I just want to learn. Uh, I'm not going to bug you. That itself is going to just elevate your career because obviously like you, you know, watching someone do something versus you like, you know, mimicking what they do is, is completely different. So um, that is key. That is very key. So I think that's about it of what I have here. And oh, another thing I would say, this is huge as well. Um, ask or uh, learn new stuff. That's huge, right? Learn new stuff. So don't, you know, th there's going to be times where, you know, at a certain point, right? In the beginning, obviously, you know, you're learning a lot because the network's new, everything's new to you, right? But there's going to be a time where you may plateau in terms of knowledge. And, and this happens with a lot of engineers because you're doing the same, sometimes you may doing the same, you may do like repetitive act, ta tasks or you're doing the same thing on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, but you guys should always still be learning no matter what. So whether that's learning new skills within your job um, or like to be more valuable within the company or that also like, you know, learning new skills that are outside of your work maybe like if you're learning like if you guys are not doing any programming maybe learn a little bit of programming learn a little bit of cloud learn a little bit about different infrastructures um obviously but obviously be you know be in depth about what you're doing so if you're learning if you're a network engineer probably focus a lot more on networking but obviously learn things that are like you know programming because that's 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 another tool that's obviously going to be used with automation and if you guys can learn that is it's a powerful tool and obviously there's more tools that you guys can learn but um learning that Learning the new stuff is key. So, uh, with that being said, guys, I mean, thank you guys so much for uh, for tuning in this far to the video. Um, being a network engineer is absolute. I love this this work that I do. It's a, it's a fun job that I have, and uh, yeah, it's a, it's a really it's a really it's it's a very. I would say it's my it's the best form of IT because you you know you're working you're the you're the backbone of of of, of to make IT work. So, uh, with that being said, guys, 
um, you know, being being a network engineer is you know treat treat it uh, you know with the utmost respect. So with that being said, it's documentations, it's asking questions, it's uh, you always keep learning, always keep learning, always keep learning, um, make mistakes and learn from those mistakes. And last thing is just mentor your mentor with your seniors. And uh, with that being said, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, if you guys have any questions, leave down leave them down below in the comment. If you like the video, give it a like. Um, if you do want more content like this, then uh, go ahead and subscribe, and I'll keep creating more content about network engineering, IT related topics, the general tech industry. So, uh, with that being said, guys, thank you so much, and uh, peace.